The world may not seem like the safest place right now. Billions of people are in isolation, cowering around piles of toilet paper. People biking, shopping, and even drinking are wearing masks. And everyone is talking about tigers all of a sudden. Much of the world is in isolation now, for the first time in history for many places. After seeing how the world actually copes with a big threat, a lot of people are imagining themselves disappearing into the forest to live alone. However, there are a lot of people that have prepped for a worldwide event just like this. There are underground doomsday bunkers all over the earth. And these aren't just tiny rooms with cans of spam and stale water. These are bunkers more luxurious and incredible than entire complexes, mansions, and even towns above ground. But they don't come cheap. Today, we're going to take a look at the most expensive underground bunkers in the world and see exactly what you get for that price. Number three, Survival Condo in Kansas, United States. Gone are the days of picturing you and your family huddled in a 10 by 10 square by yourselves during the apocalypse. When it all goes down and you're stuck underground, wouldn't you want to have people by your side? Well, you can have some good old neighborhood barbecues, lounge by the pool, even soak in your spa tub, you know, 175 meters underground. Survival Condo in Kansas offers you a chance to do all those things in the midst of a zombie apocalypse, nuclear war, or stray atomic bomb. The living complex offers several luxury condos to choose from, ranging in price from $1.5 million for a 922-square-foot condo, all the way up to $4.5 million for a 3,600-square-foot penthouse. Though the penthouse is still on the top floor, don't expect any better views than anyone else in the complex. Each room is fitted with fake LED windows that project images of the outdoors. The condos all have state-of-the-art features, including luxury furniture, stainless steel kitchens, televisions, Wi-Fi, rainfall showers, and jacuzzi tubs. But that begs the question, where on earth are you getting food from? Well, Survival Condo is a real farm-to-table operation. The complex has a hydroponic farm that provides fresh fruits and vegetables and also has several aquaculture tanks where fish are farmed. Fortunately, after your meal of fish and veggies, there's a lot of fun that can be had in the communal areas. There's a full gym, so you can keep fit with your fellow bunker mates. A full pool with real palm trees and a slide. A library with thousands of books, a full movie theater, a rock climbing wall, and even a dog park. Because every good apocalypse story needs a dog. Speaking of the apocalypse, the survival condo seems as though it would stand up pretty well. The silo-shaped complex has entrance doors that weigh eight tons, and the walls are nine feet thick. Number two, the Oppidum. There are a lot of companies and individuals that are making billions off people's fear by creating and selling these bunkers. In the Czech Republic, real estate entrepreneur Jacob Zamrazil saw such an opportunity and went for it. In 2013, he purchased a former Soviet bunker that was built in 1984, and now he's selling it for a whopping $250 million. He spent the past several years transforming the complex into a luxury doomsday destination. There's an above-ground home for all your pre-apocalypse activities. And it isn't anything to scoff at. The above-ground portion includes an expensive home with a full golf course, a helipad, tennis courts, and state-of-the-art defense systems. And as for the underground, well, it's fit for a king. There's one large master apartment that spans an impressive 6,750 square feet, with 17 additional apartments that are 1,720 square feet. The apartments are fully furnished, of course, and are styled to resemble a five-star hotel. They have sleek, high-end furniture, minimalist decor, and impressive electronics. Of course, there are virtual panels to give the illusion of the outdoors. Each bathroom is fit with a gold whirlpool tub, two rainfall shower heads, and two sinks, providing luxury amenities.
amenities in each suite. But if they're looking for a more communal, relaxing experience, residents can go to the subterranean garden and pool. Lights on this floor mimic the sun, so residents can relax poolside and imagine themselves above ground. After that, they can head inside to the full treatment spa. There's more fun to be had than just a spa and pool, of course. The complex comes with its own bar and nightclub, but keep it hush-hush. I hear the nightclub is pretty underground. <laughs> There's also a billiards room, a full movie theater, a library, and of course, a massive wine cellar. It's the end of the world, so you might as well get a little tipsy. Aside from fun and comfort, the Oppidum provides next level safety. There's a hospital and dental office, and an extensive communications room that allows communication with the outside world. Number one, Vivos Europa One. Vivos is a company that is dedicated exclusively to making underground bunkers for the wealthy. So it comes as almost no surprise that they would be the creators behind the most expensive underground bunker of all time, which is expected to sell for at least a billion dollars. Europa One, much like the other bunkers on our list, is an extensive complex with multiple apartments and communal areas. There is over 220,000 square feet of living space and an additional 43,906 square feet of warehouses and offices above ground. The area above the facility also has a train depot for delivering supplies and people to the bunker in case of emergency. There are three tunnels to enter the facility, each of which is protected by three doors which ensure the lock is airtight, radiation proof, biological warfare proof, and blast proof. There's even gates and guard towers surrounding the above ground facilities. Europa One has everything on lockdown, and that includes their plan for the moment the apocalypse begins. Members will land their private jets or helicopters, and then they will be whisked inside the facility to their private quarters. Protective suits will be provided in the case of biological or radioactive threats, and the upper level of the facility is outfitted with several vehicles. Do you believe that? Do you think your life's going to be amazing? It will be. That has a powerful impact on people. So powerful. hunting, fishing, and gardening equipment. Each family is given a fully furnished apartment that is something out of a futuristic magazine. The entire walls of the bedroom are LED screens, and all the furniture is as luxurious as it comes. But it is the common areas where the Europa One truly shines. There are roadways, bakeries, restaurants, English pubs, chapels, computer rooms, classrooms, hair salons, pet kennels, hydroponic gardens, a hospital, and even its own television and radio station. <laughs> In truth, it is much more like an underground city than a simple complex. There's also a full pool, a spa, and a movie theater with a starry sky. Though living in a bunker isn't all fun and games, there are some rather serious things that need to be addressed in the creation of the bunker. Europa One will also serve as a museum for zoological species, DNA samples, precious artifacts, and a hall of records meant to survive any catastrophe. As far as doomsday prepping goes, I'd say Europa One is a fairly safe bet. So, there you have it. The most expensive underground bunkers in the world. Which one would you prefer? Do you think they're worth it, or is it a waste of money? Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? Obadiah 1 and 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up so as you can see the Lord sees all man you know and there's no place that this devil can go away from him to hide you see so before we get going we give our honor praise and we gotta give our honor praise and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Wahakadash Wakah Double honors to the apostles and the elders at the Great Millstone who were well. Peace and blessings to the brothers teaching the truth across the four corners of the earth. And peace and blessings to you awakening Israelites, those, that, those of you that have awakened of the Israelite nation. Um, formerly, you know, never really truly believed in yourself to be of the so-called blacks. Uh, 
Negro, African American, Native American, West Indian, Hispanic, Latino, Latina, ethnicity. It was all a lie, so you turn back. So to you, I say peace and blessings as well, you women, children, and men out there, right? Friends of the prophets. So the the devil he cannot hide from the the most high, man. And we're just going to start this off with that real quick. This is Psalms 139 and 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold. You see, and hell, hell represents uh, Shial, which is, you know, the Hebrew word for the grave, the ground. You see, and the grave is found where? It's in the ground. So... Pretty much, this is telling us you can't get it, you can't escape the Lord, because it tells us that His Spirit is in all things. You know, if I make my bed in hell, you see, and your bed is found in where? Your home. You see that? It says, Behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, yeah, so that's it, man. Behold, thou art there. All right. Now, going back to Psalms 2 and 1, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Right? So, you think you can escape the most high, but it's already written. You can't. You see what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. Because the bunkers are talked about in the scriptures. This is Amos 9 and 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are gathered... Slaki, behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. And whose kingdom is that? It's, the, it's, it's Esau's, man. Right? It's Esau's kingdom. The Lord had already told us that his kingdom is, 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 is not from hence. You see what I'm saying? Because he's of the Israelite nation, whose kingdom is said to come once Esau's kingdom ends because we are currently still under e in Esau's world. The most Yahweh Shah's kingdom, right? The kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah comes when we get when Esau's world ends. It comes when Jacob's world begins. You see what I'm saying? This is second Ezra six and one. And he said unto me in the beginning when the earth was made before the borders of the world stood, wherever the winds blew, before it thundered and lighten it, or ever the foundation of paradise were laid. I'm going to jump down to five. And ere the present years were sought out, and or ever the inventions of them that now sin tur tur were turned, before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure. So before everything played out into the time we have now, then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone and through none other. By me also shall they shall be ended, and by none other. Then I then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first? You see, in the in the beginning of it that followed it. So that's talking about Yahweh Shah, first and foremost. All right, Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shah was used. Yahweh used Yahweh Shah to, you know, pretty much make, you know, uh, everything. He was the first creation. You see what I'm saying? Now, uh, created by the Heavenly Father. Now, this the same man who told these people his kingdom could not uh, was not of this world because. He's an Israelite, right? He's of the Israelite nation. Yahweh Shah is of the Israelite nation. This is John 18 and 36. I'm going to start at 35. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and, thy chief, and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Yahweh Shah answered. Yahweh Shah answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now... Is my kingdom not from hence? 
You see? So, this is 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Yahweh shall answer, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth, unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. You see what I'm saying? So his kingdom was spoke about in the 26th chapter of Matthew as well, what we know to be the 26th chapter as well, where it says that he wasn't going to... Um, Drink, he wasn't gonna drink of the wine until he drank it new in his father's kingdom. Why? Because he just said, and won't that be when this world ends? Because he said his his kingdom is not of this world, right? So thus hinting why do you have the damn uh the devil, you know, all these these heathens with all these bunkers because they know, you know, according to biblical prophecy that there's going to be an ending of this world, the society that the so-called white man um, has led, you know, and feasted off of because it was his world the whole time. Now, they don't know how we do, but they know. This is Matthew 26, and I'm going to start at verse 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. You see, and he already and so his father's kingdom is his kingdom. It's gonna be the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, the Israelite kingdom. You see what I'm saying? The kingdom of the Israelites, in which the hopeful elect will be joint heirs with. It's gonna be our kingdom. So the first thing to understand with that is that it can't come until our world begins, and which can't happen also until this one ends, which is why you have these uh, you know, these these heathens, these you see, these these are elite uh, bankers, these millionaires, these billionaires spending their all on going into the ground for some reason, right? Because the world is set to end. So this is not, this is not made up. This is not coincidence. This is all scriptural, scriptural, right? So real quick, let's go ahead and go back to second Ezra six and seven. Then answer I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of, of the times or when shall the be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow it. So we're in a certain kingdom right now. It's the white man's kingdom. And how so who will be a so-called black man, according to today's standards, um, his kingdom is of the, uh, it comes when this world ends. So this is 2 Ezra 6 and 8. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. See that? So, if this is so-called white man's world, we know he's Esau. This is not a beginner video, but nonetheless, it hits the point. So, these dang white people, so-called white people, and all these heathens join together with them, these top so-called white people, and all these top heathens join together with them. You know the lead heathen, which is uh, the so-called white man. They would he they would in fact have to be, according to these scriptures, and based off what they're doing. Esau, right? So they're seconding that this world is going to end, and it's telling us that Esau's world is set to end, and then Jacob being the beginning of it that followeth. That's why Yahusha didn't. He said his servants wouldn't fight. You see, because we were still in Esau's world. He hasn't came yet. The kingdom of heaven has not came yet. So we're still in Esau's world. So the 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 bunkers that's being invested into is 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 rightfully uh, uh, so, uh, so to be done because the end is going to come in the most devastating way that people, you know, most you know average person is not sitting back thinking about. You know, wouldn't you know, they're not imagining, you know, but you got the heathen imagining that they can escape. And they can't. So, um, I'm going to real quick, I'm going to go back. Since I say that, let's go back to Psalms 2. And this ain't nothing too drawn out. It's just a vain thing and it's going to be to no avail for them. You know, but ultimately this is for us. This is exactly how we're going to be living. 
you know, the Lord's going to give this to us, you know, for the eat. And then he was going to allow some Edomites to escape unto him. But this is Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing, you see? And imagination is having an underground city. Imagination, uh, uh, as you can see right here, it says, here to survive the apocalypse in style. That's an imagination. Surrounded by 64 million uh, swimming pools, theaters, gyms, and restaurants. That's all underground. The invitation-only survival bunker is described as the world's ultimate dooms they escape. You can't escape the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Let me get, uh, we just went into that, man. Psalms 137 tell you that. You see? It says, and can withstand nuclear blasts. That's impossible. Chem chemical agents, earthquakes, and tsunamis. See, they know what's getting ready to come. When a missile hit, that's that's they 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 know this. So we're not gonna go because we already watched the video. You know. And this is for you that's you know seeing the lies and you you know what I'm saying, we having car trouble and these people got underground cities. Well, I'll have you know this sister sitting right here, she appears to be an Israelite. So you this is for you Israelites turning back. This is a faith booster. Right? Proving what the world is really about to end. The so-called white man is Esau. Our world is really about to start. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Messiah has not came back. It's not because the Bible's fake. It's just a process of time. You see what I'm saying? It's all... It's, it's, it's a method to the madness. You see what I'm saying? So you have to first get with and game. You know? And on why... On what's going on and why you want to consider things you have not considered. You see, you see that the so-called so-called white man has been lying. He set up the pastors; they've been lying, and in fact, you don't know who you are. So you are Israelite. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and the world is about to be destroyed. Now, this is a face booster for you to come in on this even further because this is how you're going to escape when a nuclear bomb truly hits. You see, this is for the Israelites. So this is why the heathen is imagining a, imagining a vain thing, because he can't escape. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, together against the Lord and His anoint, and, and against His anointed, saying, "Let us let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us." He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh; the Lord shall have them in derision. You see, so that's what the Lord said we were going to do too. He said we were going to laugh. This is Job 5 and 22. At destruction, matter of fact, I'm going to start at, I'm going to start at, this is Job 5 and 7. Yet, yet man is born unto trouble. You see, we're born, this is Jacob's trouble. This is all a part of Jacob's trouble. You see what I'm saying? And that's why they're getting ready to hide because during Jacob's trouble is when these nuclear missiles will be shot and the, the elites try to escape, you see. So man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I will seek unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah and unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah would I commit my cause. Why? Because the Lord, he does all this. It tells us in Amos, uh, it's the third chapter, the uh, sixth verse. Um, that the have to kept, shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord have not done it. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord is behind the missiles. He said he created he created the waste to, to destroy. He's already prophesied how he want all these nations to shoot against America. So they already know. You know you're gonna have missiles really flying all over the place, but they're gonna really target to completely obliterate America, because that's what's written, and that's where you Israelites are at, man. A uh, high concentration of you Israelites. So if we need to get on the winning team, you want to be on the side that's being shot from, not to shot, not on the side on, 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 to which it will be shot. You see, so you need to separate and come back to your heritage because we're, this is the Lord is going to use these bunkers to have us escape as well. It says, "Which doeth great." So I will seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause. 
which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. You didn't pay for none of this, and the Lord can put you in one of these things, man. It says, who giveth rain upon the earth, who, who giveth rain upon the earth, and sendeth waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that be low. So that's us. We're the valley, man. It says that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. To safety. You see what I'm saying? So you can't make this up. This is all spiritual. Living quarters. It is likely the complex will only be open to the super wealthy. Well, the Lord tell us in Revelation. Let me see if I can get that real quick. Cause a lot, and then a lot of these super wealthies are the fake. These are fake Jews, man. You see. So it's funny. It's funny that it says they, these things won't be open to the super wealthy. Well, the Lord, He He decides who's who's wealthy. This is Revelation two and nine. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty. You see. So the Lord acknowledged those impoverished, and He acknowledged those rich. And he looks at them in certain ways according to the scriptures. But thou art rich. You see? I know thy work, thy works, and tribulation, and poverty. But thou art rich. You see? You can't make this up, man. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You see? So a lot of Israelites, because it say, Fear none of those things which the devil which thou shalt suffer, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, because you're truly royalty. So some of our people, some of our people gonna get rounded up, and some of them that don't get rounded up, where do you think they're gonna be? Here. You see what I'm saying? Cause when all hell break loose, you gotta be around. Uh, um, your 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 bunker to use it, but it is likely that the pad will be only available to the uber wealthy. You see, so that's that's just something a faith booster, real quick. So the Lord is gonna laugh at these people because he said the 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 poor are actually rich. He said he's going to uh uh the Lord said is saying he's going to set up for Job five and eleven. To set up those that be that be low, you see, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. You see what I'm saying? So you can't make this up. And what what's the bunkers for? For safety. You see? And more. That's that's an that's an imagination right there. This is Matthew five. And three, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is, is the kingdom of heaven, you see, which will be on earth. Our world getting ready to start. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. For they shall be comforted. You see this? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It's all this stuff going to come to us, man. You see what I'm saying? Period. Now, jumping back. Job 5 and 11, to set up those... That be low, you see that. Let me get that. I got I got I gotta get. I gotta get them. This is Isaiah forty and one. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Who's the Lord's people? The Israelites. Say of your God, your power. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her. So cry mean to recite. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. You know he's telling you what's going on. We're reading his word. It says. That her warfare is that her, her warfare is accomplished. You can't you can't make this up, man. You can't, because the, the bunkers is set up to escape warfare. So it says, situated in the German village of Rostein, the five star Vivos Europa, one shelter is described as the world's ultimate doomsday escape. And they've been working on these things since you know the 80s. You see what I'm saying? Probably since the you know, probably since like the 80s, 70s, you know, this, this stuff is not new. They've been preparing. They've been new. So it says, uh, what was I just at? Isaiah 40 and uh, uh, 
Two, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. You see? So it's finished. It's over with. We, 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 we're good now. This is all this hell breaking loose is to really for the Lord to show his return back to us, man. And, and, and confound these heathens. It says that her iniquity is, is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand, of Yahweh's hands, double for all her sins. You see? So the Lord is about to get, he, 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 we're, he got us already. You you the one, while they building this, you the one trying to figure out how to uh, fix your car, man. How to, you know, how you finna pay this bill, get your phone working. All this stuff, man. How you gonna get a car? All of this. You know, real quick, let me grab this too. This is Zechariah. So this is a, this is a faith booster right here, man. That's what this is about. Zechariah 1 and 13. And the Lord Yahweh answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So that so the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou. See? Cry thou. So recite this, bring this back, get his word of mouth, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous, you see, for Jerusalem and for Zion with great jealousy. You see, I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, you see. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped for the affliction. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem. With mercies, my house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. It say, Cry ye, cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, my cities through my cities through prosperity shall yet be built my cities through prosperity shall yet be be spread abroad, and the Lord Yahweh Bashmiel shall shall yet and the Lord Yahweh and the Lord Yahweh Bashmiel Shah shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. You see what I'm saying? So we're gonna be straight, man. You know how you think we're gonna be straight? You know. So this is this is Isaiah 40 and two three. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight the in the desert. A highway for our God. We're, we're likened unto a, de a desert. You see? Every valley shall be... And what's a highway for our God? You see? It says, every valley shall be exalted. Because it's a highway. You see? High, and then it's a way. Right? So every valley shall be exalted. That's the highway, man. It says in every you know transition. It says in every mountain sh and hill shall be made low. You see? And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, you see? And the glory of the Lord, Yahweh Bashmiel Shah, shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Real quick, let's drop that. And let's grab this real quick. This is Hosea 1 and 10. Because all flesh going to see it, right? Because all this about to come to us. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. You see, and the children, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, be gathered together and appoint themselves one head and they shall come up out of the land. You see, that's the hopeful elect. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. You see? So that's it, man. The Lord, he going to get his stuff to us. So this is why the heathen, he, he, he's imagining a, a vain thing ultimately. And that's why the Lord going to laugh at him. Because he's going to yet choose us, man. The lowly. This is Job 5 and 13. 12 or 11. Job 5 and 11. To set up on high those that be low. You see? That those which mourn may be exalted to safety. 
You see? He dis dis disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. You see? He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the fraud is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and, gr and grope in the noonday as in the night. So they meet with darkness in the daytime because they come together, and that's how they put all the... When, when all hell breaking loose, they keeping people in the dark, you know, uh, during the day. You see what I'm saying? They meeting... When all hell breaking loose in Beverly Hills, they meeting in Bohemian Grove. Uh, uh, people being shot dead in the streets. You know, you Israelites, their own, you know, because this is about the elite. The elite meeting in Bohemian Grove. You see what I'm saying? With darkness during the daytime. You know? Imagining vain things and wickedness. You see? So this is a... Uh, Continue. It says, but he saved the poor from the sword. You see, that's showing you that's what that's representing. That darkness is how they're going to get at us. It says, but he saved the poor from the sword because they want us to get bombed from, the, from their mouth and from the hand of the mighty. And the mighty are those that have, you know, riches. Real quick, this is uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 9, and we're going to jump to verse 24. Now I'm going to start at 23. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. You see? But let him that glory, the glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, Judgment and righteousness in the earth for in these things I delight save the Lord you see so He gonna keep he, he, and it says um, Behold the days come save the Lord that I will punish all them that are circumcised with the uncircumcised Because these people are imagining vain things They think they can escape when the Lord is going to give everybody the works of their hands So if you've been wicked, but yet you got all the money in the world You really think you can escape judgment? No, because you can't go anywhere from the Lord's spirit it's impossible. So that's why you imagine in a vain thing, and the Lord is going to laugh, man. But we're going to laugh, too. So he saved the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty, which is those, you know, because uh, uh, a lot of these elite bankers, they fund the military. They fund all these things, and, and a man's might is his resources and his money, man. You see? So the poor had, so the poor, so that's it. We're saved, but we're saved from all that. And, uh, and they, they like uh, a mighty man will be George Soros, you see? He's a billionaire. He's behind the Antifa groups. He's fund the the, uh, the different riots, the protests that take place, you know, in which a lot of Jakes, you know, are being killed and uh, being jailed and snared and hid in prison houses, as the scriptures talk about you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Well, they set all that up. But he saved those that turned back t to him from those. Because all those things are set up just to snare us. You see? That's what they do with their might. That's them meeting in, in, in daytime with darkness, though. They're the darkness. But anyway, so it says, So the poor had hope, you see? And iniquity stopped her mouth. You see? Behold, happy is the man who God corrected, whom Yahweh Bashmiel shall correct it. Therefore, despise not the chastening of the Almighty, the Almighty, the Almighty. You see what I'm saying? So he 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 mess your car up because he wants you to get this truth. He mess your car up because he wants you to get this truth, and then you end up seeing the truth on your phone. You see what I'm saying? For he make it sore and bind it up. He wounded and his hands make hold. So he can't. If he don't want these Edomites to be saved, they're not gonna be saved. The ones that do, they're gonna just be able to escape into them just to fulfill prophecy because they're going to be pulled out afterwards to go into slavery to you people. You know, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. It says, he shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yeah, in seven shall no evil touch thee. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in, and in war from the power of the sword. And what's the power of the sword? 
right? The devastation that a nuclear missile can bring. You see? And what the scriptures talk about, they will come and they're going to cause a lake of fire, man. That's America being drowned in fire, but from all the missiles hitting it. So it says, in famine, he shall redeem thee. So when all the stores have, you know, no more food is coming in through the ports, we ain't going to be dying from death because he's going to keep, he's going he gonna, to he gonna make a way. He's going to give us a way. You got all type of ways the Lord's going to help us, man. We're going to eat, man. And then war, right, when World 3 is literally kicking off from the power of the sword. That's the missiles, man, ultimately. You know, and then the, the gunshots and all that stuff that take place during the race wars and uh, resistance to, you know, martial law and people being rounded up. It says, thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, right? And how are we being hid? We in these scriptures. So this, the, the scourge of the tongue is, is, is when Esau's words try you. He try to play on people's minds. It's like we're not even around for it because we're in the scriptures. So when we hear it, the scriptures just cover cover our ears. you like, up, oh, you lying. The scriptures say this. So it's like you hear it almost, man. And when he try to present little advertisements to... Uh, you know, which is pretty much witchcraft to try to, you know, um, get you hallucinating or um, hypnotized. You see what I'm saying? Put a certain spirit on you in your mind. You a certain understanding. It's like, the, the, once again, the scriptures pop up. We hid. It cover our eyes. So that's how we hid. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, right? Because the tongue is likened unto a weapon. It says, which the so-called white man has. Right? Uses his ass. It says, Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Now why? Because you probably gonna be in the bunker, man. And end all be all. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. You see? Thou shalt laugh. Right? Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. You see? So that's it, man. And I'm gonna jump down to uh verse 23. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee, and thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. Because <laughs> you're going to be in a bunker, man. You see? Lord really put us in a bunker. You know? Have us put up in one of these, man. It's crazy. He have all the elect in the underground city the whole time. You see that? Then Yahweh shall come, tell us it's time to come so we can take the heathens that, you know, made it into a few of them out, you know. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. And if you don't, the Lord will put you in a bubble and have you see everything without even being underground. And you, it's like you in a bunker. He'll put you in a bubble. You know, he could do that. But more than likely, it's going to be this, man. It's amazing. It says, and thou shalt visit Salakia, that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shall not sin. So that's it, man. That's it, man. So that's why uh, uh, the Lord is going to laugh. Because it, it's a vain attempt by the so-called uh, white man again, thinking that he's about to... Uh, escape judgment man or he's gonna he, he's really gonna be able to set himself against us in the most high and get us cut off when he could just put us in there because everything he's doing is to 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 uh no avail man this is uh psalms 49 and and six you know what? i'm gonna start at one hear this all ye people give ear all ye inhabitants of the world both low and high, rich and poor together. You see, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Now, verse 5, Wherefore sh should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my hills shall uh, compass me about? They that trust in their, rich, in their wealth and boast themselves, in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a, a, a give to God, the Heavenly Father, the Most High, a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever. That he, so your money is to no avail, man. You see? 
So all this is to no avail. Because ultimately, you're going to give it to us. You see what I'm saying? And if somebody dies, you can't even bring them back. You can't pay for your life. It says that he should live forever and not see corruption. For the redemption of their soul is, pre is precious and ceases forever. That he should still live forever and not see corruption. For he that seeth the wise men die. For he that seeth the wise men die. Likewise, the fool and the brutish person perish. And leave their wealth to others. You see that? Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. And their dwelling places to all generations. Right? Meaning their kids. Right? You die early. Well, honey, I spent all the years building a bunker. You know, you give it the little, you know, such and such. It says, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. You know, and he keeps it up. You know, I left for love money. You know, he died on the bed with cancer or something like that. It says, and all that money can't bring him back. If the Lord wants you gone, you gone. If you make it, he wanted you to stay for whatever reason. They call their lands after their own names. So that's talking about the so-called white man. So yeah, man. So all that's going to be gathered to us, man. Period. So real quick, since I say that real quick, let me go ahead and grab this. I got a couple more. So yeah, these people, they invested in these bunkers, man. These bunkers are 100% in the scriptures. This is, this is Obadiah, this is, this is Amos 9 and 8. Behold, the eyes of the, of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. You see what I'm saying? This is a kingdom because a lot of these play. it's a lot of bunkers in America, man. You see what I'm saying? And then you got Edomites that got, you know, these bunkers all over the world, all over the earth. This is a uh, 9 and 8 continued. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. Because he's going to save us, save the Lord. You see? So that's it, man. You know? For lo, I will command and will and I will sift the house of Israel from among all nations, like as corn is is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord can put us up until he's ready to beam us up in one of these bunkers. Easy. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Like these missiles is getting ready to really hit, man. You see what I'm saying? So while you worrying about Magic City or, you know, whatever it is that may be going on, I don't think that is even going on no more, you know, during this corona crap, you know, you know whatever Jake into. Um, that's that, man. You know, he that's, that's how he's going to sift us. He's going to put us up. All right. But the so-called white man is, is definitely invested in these, in these, uh, these, these bunkers. This is Amos 9 and 3, Salakia 2. It says, matter of fact, I'm going to start at one. I saw the Lord standing upon on the altar, and he said, smite the lintel of the door that the post may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He, he that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. You see? So it's talking about the um it's talking about the so-called white man, man. Right? Cause he said, uh, smite the lintel of the door that the post may shake, right? And cut them in the head, all of them. Cause if you get the head, the body gonna fall, and the Lord already said he's about to send back Yahweh Shah, who's gonna wound the heads. Over many countries. This is Psalms 110 and verse 5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the dead, the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. So that's why we just read in the Amos. 9 and 1, I saw the Lord standing upon on the altar, and he said, smite the lintel of the doorpost, which is uh, the chapter of the knock. It says that the post may shake, 
and cut them in the head, right? Or wound them is what they have here in the head. All of them that, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. So that's that head. The heads over many countries. And the heads over many countries is these elites, man. You see what I'm saying? Netanyahu, uh, Trump, Putin, the Rothschilds, you know, uh, Queen Elizabeth, all these different people, man. Uh, Henry Kissinger, all these people. You see? It says, uh, he that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. So it don't matter that they got all these stuff. Uh, they're not going to survive this, man. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. And this is impossible again. So, and we're going to uh, 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 grab them up, as you just heard. The Lord is going to have us grab them up. He's going to get all these heathens that do make it into there, as he said. Because you can make it in there, but you're not going to be delivered. It says, uh, uh, so uh, he that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. So you escape into the bunker only to be taken. Because it says, though they dig into hell, meaning the ground, right? They dig however many feet under the ground, as the video told you. It says, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. See that? We're going to take them out of that ground when it's all said and done. They're going into slavery. This is Amos 9. And um, this is Amos 9 and 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. So verse 14, and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel and they shall and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and inhabit them. Um, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, thereof and it's so like it. They shall also make the gardens. They also shall make gardens and eat the fruit of them. I will plant them upon their own land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them. Save the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahushua, thy power. So these heathens going into slavery, man. They're going to be pulled out of these grounds, and they're going into slavery. So that's pretty much it on it. So that's why the Lord is going to laugh, because at the end of the day, it's to no avail like what they're doing. It's only going to be to uh, you know, uh, given, given, given to us, you know. So if you escape into the, into those, you know, that ground, it's only to get you know get going to slavery. This is Amos nine and twelve. When he make an inquisition for blood, he remembered them. He forgetted not the cry of the humble. It's talking about us, or another word for it is afflicted. It says when which these elites, these rich, they get together during the daytime. White with darkness and, and, and communic, uh, commune against us, you know. And the Lord, how they going to escape it and, and get us killed? Because they want to be Jacob. It says, have mercy upon me, old Yahweh. Consider my, my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate, that hate me, that lifts me up from the gates of death. That I may shoot forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down into the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. You see what I'm saying? The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hand. So it's going to be a trap. You're going to be down there just to be preserved for slavery, man. You see what I'm saying? Verse 18. It says, uh, matter of fact, uh, verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell, meaning he's going to make them. Remember, he's, that's the, uh, the mountains being made low because when you hell is a lower form. That's all it is. It's a lower, it's a lower condition. You see what I'm saying? It's a condition. It says, and all, the, and all the nations that forget the most high, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation, the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. And what are, what are we waiting? We waiting to bind these people in, 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 in chains, man. I'll tell you that in Psalms 149th chapter. I'll tell you that Revelation the 13th chapter. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints, man. You know, we waiting to see the Lord work, man. You see? So that's it. I got one more to go into the head 
and they're going to how they finna give all this stuff to us. These bunkers is these bunkers are for us. You see what I'm saying? If you don't go into one, your slaves is gonna be, you know, preserved in one. Top dudes. Right? Top, top men. And this is Job 27 and 13. This is the portion of a wicked man with the Hawabah Shem Shah and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword. And if his, and his offspring and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. His widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. You see that? So he piling up, they stacking, they got their money. Look, you know how much money it take? Look, 64 million, man. 640 million. Salakia. Euros. But anyway, it says... Um, He may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. So he prepared this whole place, this whole city. You see? And the innocent shall divide the silver. You see? That's us, man. He built his house as a moth and as a booth that the keeper make it. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. You see? He opened his eyes and he is not. So that's what's going to happen, man. That's it. So it says, terrors take hold on him as waters, because they know a tempest stilleth him away in the night. The east wind carried him away. Who's the east wind? And he departed. So that's that right hand taking him, man. Your house shall going to take him out, the, out that cave, man, out of, these, out of these bunkers. And as a storm hurled him out of his place. You see? For Yahweh Bashem Yahushua shall cast upon him and not spare he would he would he would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him. So we're gonna be clapping and shall hiss him out of his place. You see what I'm saying? So that's 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 the him him being him being taken and him also uh, setting these bunkers up just for us, man. So that's it, man. So there's nowhere you can hide from Yahweh Shah, Psalms 139 and 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I free? From thy presence, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. You see that? So that's that, man. And this is my last scripture. This is Psalms 34 and 1. The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false, and dreams lift up fools. So I rack 37 and 3. O wicked imagination, which camest thou? in to cover the earth with deceit so lord willing this has been edifying hey man we ain't got nothing to worry about man if the scriptures tell us he that keep the commandments you have by shim y'all shall shall feel no evil thing man right whoever perish being innocent so-called white man not innocent we've repented you know and now we are so Lord, one has been edifying. Shalom.